Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. We're investigating a case, and one of your laundry labels came up. F-1363. If you give me a minute, I'll go find a register, and you can take a look. You take a look for yourself. I've got clothes that need pressing. You wrote the number down on that dress, is it there? Mrs. T. Terrelson, 43 Emerald Street, Westlake. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Fine. Where are we headed? I've got a feeling we're about to meet another wife killer. You've always got that feeling, Rusty. Yeah, and it's usually correct. Please, please, for once, can you not let your assumptions color your detective work? Just you wait. Nordic types show a particular disposition for this stuff. Yes? Detectives Phelps and Galloway. Is your wife home, sir? My wife went out last night and she hasn't come home. Can you describe your wife and what she was wearing? We were out at a friend's place, Bobby Ross's, for a party. She was kind of dolled up. She had her green silk dress, open-toed white shoes. Those are her favorite shoes. Can we come in, Mr. Tarleton? I'm afraid we have some rather bad news. Do you have someone who can look after your children, Mr. Terrelson? I've been trying to arrange a sitter. Look, tell me what's happened. I'm afraid your wife was murdered last night. Her body was found this morning. We're very sorry for your loss. I know this is a difficult time, Mr. Terrelson, but we are going to need you to answer some questions. First, we're going to take a look around. What for? You don't think this that... This procedure. You see to your girls. Stay here till Daddy's finished talking to these men. Where's Mommy? Everything's gonna be all right, sweetheart. We would like Mommy to come home now, Daddy. What's the problem, Terrelson? Let him search. You got nothing to hide. You wanna hear something funny, Terrelson? No good to Some me. Some think filling out a missing persons report actually rules him out as a suspect. Check if she was a regular. I wonder why the picture was turned down. This is going to help us. B. 
Baron's bar again. Someone must be real sweet on this dive. If you'd excuse me, ladies. Nothing significant. So she went out without her handbag? At least she was spared that particular indignity. She'd have to be in quite a state to leave this behind. see if Pinker can match the impression to the crime scene. Lars was out in the rain last night. Match with the ligature marks. I'll be out of your way momentarily, ladies. For the record, Mr. Terrelson, what is your wife's name? Teresa. Do you have any idea why anyone would want to hurt your wife? No. Everyone loved Teresa. She was so full of life. It can't be anyone who knew her. For the record, Terrence, did you kill your wife? Oh my god. This is... No. I didn't kill my wife. And fuck you for suggesting it. You said you went to a party at Bobby Ross's place? That's right. Bobby had a bunch of people over. We were having a good time. She said she was bored and decided to leave. So when I call this Bobby Ross character and he tells me you're lying... Look, what do I have to do to convince you that I stayed at the party? Looks like I was mistaken. Mr. Terrelson, was Teresa happy at home? Yeah, I think she was. Spill it, Terrelson. We like the look of you for this, so you better give us something. We're at the party. She has a few and says she wants to go out dancing. We only have the sitter until nine. I get mad. I tell her to go ahead, but I'm staying. She storms out. Look, I'm doing well at cards. I hardly ever do well. I married her because she was so much fun, but now she drives me fucking crazy. What time did she leave the party? About 8.30, maybe a little earlier. When was the last time you saw your wife? Around 8.30. The card game at Bobby's was wrapping up. I played out my hand and drove home here. I paid the sitter and went to bed. You're lying, Lars. You didn't come straight home, did you? And how do you figure that? You were out in the rain. You got soaked, Lars. We found your wet weather gear. Okay, I stayed a little later than I said. This cute little brunette was hitting on me. <sighs> Teresa noticed. I was half cut. I walked her home from Bobby's, but nothing happened. I walked back and got the car this morning. You said you went to a party at Bobby Ross's place? That's right, Bobby had a bunch of people over. We were having a good time. She said she was bored and decided to leave. You let your drunk wife leave the party and go off on her own? Look, I was angry. I was having a good time. She has to go and ruin it. We always have to do what she wants to do. Last night she wanted to go dancing. Any idea where? Where she always goes. Bar down on North Beaudry Avenue. Baron's Bar. She goes there, drinks too much, gets maudlin, and calls me. 
I go and bring her home. Thanks for answering our questions, Mr. Charlson. You'll need to go downtown to identify your wife's body. I should have taken her dancing. In my experience, Mac, be given to Braj, you'll be given into them your entire life. We could break the husband's story right now. Call in, get some uniforms dispatched to check out his alibi. Operator, give me R and I. Putting you through now. Phelps, batch twelve forty seven. How can I help, Detective? Can you run an address for a Bobby Ross? Then send some uniforms over. Would you like him picked up? No. Suspect says he was with Ross last night. We need to confirm the alibi. I'll get a prowl car dispatched. Thank you. You can drive. And where exactly are we going? You believe this guy's story? Kind of rings true. Side between the tuna Jess. fish and the chicken. Drink? Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. I'm Benny Clough. This is about Teresa Terrelson? Yes, it is. I heard about it on the radio. They're saying it was that Black Dahlia freak again? God damn it. Yeah, you know, I rang that husband of hers. The babysitter said he was out. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. What time did Teresa leave? Uh, around uh, 10.30, I think. On foot, in a car, by bus? How was it? She called for a cab. Did you get the number? Sure I did. I like Teresa. The only time she has a drink is when things aren't going so good at home. I was worried about her. Put out an APB on the cab. 3591. Should be traceable. Who was she with? We've had reports about a tall, gaunt-looking hobo. He wasn't here last night? I get plenty of bums in here, but nothing to fit that description. You've never served him? Not a chance. By the sound of it, he's the type of bum you send packing right when he walks through the door. Any idea where she was headed? Uh, nope. I didn't get that. She was murdered, Benny. Brutally murdered. If you like this lady, you should give us something. You telling me I'm not cooperating? Watch it, pal. You want us to catch the guy, sir. We need information, not cute answers and delaying tactic. I do my best, goddammit. What do you want from a guy? Any of your regulars know the broad? Ask him yourself. LAPD, keep your seats, boys. This won't take a second. We can't let the son all. of a I bitch get away. Go, Phelps, get after him. Right, Come on, we got a ride. I thought you were going to leave me there. Who knows what this guy will pull when he's cornered. We could have a killer on our hands. I don't think the killer would be kicking back in the bar where he met the Vic in. Listen, a creature of habit is your killer. For some reason, they're sticklers for routine. Phelps, you gotta get me closer. Hit him. Clean this asshole off the road. I'll try to shoot out his tires. Wish me luck. Cole, spin him out. Ah! 
Let's end this part. All right. All right, you got me. I've had enough. God damn it, get after him, Cole. I thought you were gonna leave me there. To Who knows what this guy will pull when he's cornered. We could have a killer on our hands. Hit him, Cole. Spin him out. I don't think the killer would be kicking back in the bar where he met the Vic in. Listen, a creature of habit is your killer. For some reason, they're sticklers for routine. Come on, Phelps, you're letting this lust get away from you. Don't go to sleep on me. Get me back in close. Let's end this farce. Spin him out, Cole. The road's wet. Let's make this... No time to wait, Rusty. Where are you heading? All right. All right, you got me. I've had enough. Put your hands where I can see them. Name. Richard Bates. What is it you want? I'll ask the questions. Firstly, why did you run? I don't mix with cops if I can help it. Last night, you went drinking with a lady in the bar. Now she's dead. And your face is all messed up. I'm in the clear on that. She preferred a sailor. You could lay it off on him. Are we finished? Do you want my partner to sap you? Tell us what we want to know. She was okay. Drunk. Pissed off at her old man, wanting to go dancing. I thought I'd ply her with a few drinks and get my end away. Looks like your salty had the same idea. So what happened when you left the bar? Sailor boy laid one on me. A cheap shot. After that, I don't know. You've done time, haven't you, Richard? Is that why you ran? I'm on parole. On what offense? Sexual assault. Look, I was lying there on the sidewalk. He flags a cab and jumps in with the broad. We're taking you in, Bates. How come? Just for a chat. Nice private chat. I'll explain my theory of once a degenerate, always a degenerate. Take him to Central. He's a material witness in a murder case. Find him a cozy cell. Richard here knows the drill. Cole Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? I need an APB out on a yellow cab, number 3591. Ask dispatch to relay all sightings to car 11K. No problem. I'll get on the radio. Were there any incident reports filed in the vicinity of Barron's Bar on North Beaudry Avenue? We're tracking a sailor who was involved in a fight outside the bar. I can check the reports, Detective. I have a message for you from Captain Donnelly. Message reads, James Jessup, U.S. Navy Able Seaman, has information relevant to your case. Jessup is currently being detained at Central Station. Could be our man. Thanks. Mother would be proud of him. Can you drive to this one? Fine. Where are we headed? I think we ought to investigate the hobo lead. Well, if you think we ought to, then I guess we ought. Oh, he's 
Jesus. I fought. Where's my wife? I'm the one. I know who cares about me. I took a We're looking for a tall man with a disfigured face. Do you know him? Huh? What? I fought in two wars, you know, son. I think I earned some peace and quiet. Ah, the bum isn't here. Look at these people. We should follow the elderly. These guys can wait. I don't think so. Isn't that the cop who won the medal and is solving all? You know the way. You can drive. And where exactly are we going? He's in an interview, too. Thanks. What do you make of him? Sailor on furlough, who looks like he's in trouble and knows it. Detectives Phelps and Galloway. We know why you're here, Jessup, so it would be best if you answered our questions truthfully. I don't want any trouble. That's why I'm here. I heard on the radio about this lady getting killed. I got leave from my CO to come down straight away. So why did you kill her? I didn't kill anyone. Look, you need to believe me. Let's start at the beginning. You went to Baron's Bar. What time did you arrive? I got a 24-hour pass. I got there around 7. That's where you met Teresa Terrelson? Sure. We had a couple of drinks. So you tried to make a woman who was incredibly drunk? Look, I'm not proud of myself, but I never hurt her. You took her dancing? That's right. Caught a cab to the Crystal Ballroom. You had a fist fight with Richard Bates over Mrs. Terrelson. You met the guy? He's a creep. You should take a look at him for this. He's pointing the finger directly at you, Jessup. I only had one night before I was back in the tub. He had all the time in the world to look for some action. I belted him. I'd do it again. She was better off with me. Sure. You're a shining example of chivalry, Jessup. We're holding you till we can clear this with the driver. Yeah, my CO said as much. Can you put the guy in two in a cell and inform the commander? Sure, detective. Got a message for you. Sighting of your disfigured hobo on Grand between Temple and Sunset. And it looks like the bow has a record, too. He's wanted in connection with two female assaults. Thanks. I think those vice boys get any on the side. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Fine. 
Where are we headed? Three suspects in the can and one on the hoof. And still no hard evidence on any of them. KGPL to car 11K. 11K, come in. 11K, go ahead. Patrolman reporting that Bobby Ross's car game is breaking up at midnight. 11K, roger that. Plenty of time to get downtown, Cole. It's possible. Have them bring him in. KGPL, could we have Lars Carrollson picked up? 11K, Roger. LAPD, we'd like a word with you. Save it for someone who's interested. They're fascists. Come to move us on and steal what little we have left. Six rounds won't get us far. We need you to stay copacetic. We need to hold out to the cavalry. How do we do that? Like this. Fuck oh. that. Keep it down. Ah. If you Did want the disciples right know what you did last night? We need. Filthy hands off of you, Bob. What's your name? Comrade Stalin. Very funny. We'll find out from your personal effects. Stuart Ackerman. You're under suspicion for murder, Ackerman. We're taking you downtown. You. You can't do anything more to me than what the Japanese have already done. The Kremlin's over here, Phelps. Toss it and see what you find. Ackerman doesn't look like much of a dancer. Looks familiar. Safe bet it'll match the mark under Teresa Terrellson's chin. Still working, Jack. I'm off to the Lighthouse Club in Santa Monica. Hello, Jack. Mr. Vincent, this is Courtney Sheldon. He's a buddy of mine from the war. Well, I'm sure you two will want to polish some old war stories. Good evening, Jack. Mr. Sheldon. Good night, sir. Take a seat, Courtney. We need your help, Jack. I told you I would have nothing to do with that. I'm fine too, Jack. Medical school's going well. I got a part-time job. Do dope peddlers need part-time jobs? We made a mistake and we're in trouble, Jack. A local gangster, Mickey Cohen, is putting on the squeeze. So hand it over, walk away. What's stopping you? We had a deal with them. That they would dole it out slowly. They said they would supply abortion clinics and doctors. But they've been moving it on to addicts. And they can't cope with the purity. So your problem is with gangsters being dishonest. My problem is that people are dying. And that if this gets back to us, we'll all end up in jail. So how am I supposed to help, Courtney? This isn't the war. I can't just wave a magic wand and clean up your mess. We want you to negotiate, Jack. 
The only thing these guys understand is force, Sheldon. They got to the top back east by proving to be more vicious than the English, the Irish, and the Dutch. They make their own laws. That's the nature of a secret society. God's sake, Courtney, you want to be a doctor. How can you fight with that? We are better trained. I didn't make it through the war to come back to this kind of shit, Sheldon. You're behind the wheel. And where exactly are we going? The husband has an alibi, but no real motive other than neglect. Jessup's alibi checks out. Bates is a recidivist. He'll be pulling the same stick until we put him away for good. Ackerman has... History, opportunity, hard evidence. What motive? We have the evidence. We know she was here. All we need is a confession and we can charge the bum with murder. We're going this way. No good, John, with me, detective. Ackerman, you were in the Marines. How do you know? The Corps selected big guys for flamethrower duty. That's how you got the burns. Life expectancy was five minutes for a guy in flamethrower detail. What kind of a government puts weight like that on a man's shoulders? You'll get no argument from me. It was a heavy load. You feeling sorry for this smelly fuck? Why did you kill Mrs. Terrelson? I have no recollection of the people I have killed. You hate women, Ackerman? More than you could ever imagine. How much did you hate Mrs. Terrelson? I ache to put my seed in them. Afterwards, I have no use for them. A bus driver dropped Mrs. Terrelson near your camp around 2 a.m. Why did you take her up to the hill? Which hill? I have many places. I go where I please. You are clearly insane, Ackerman. The state of California does not execute mental patients. I don't know the names of the women I've killed, but I've killed many of them. Their necks are so fragile. Stuart Ackerman, I am charging you with the murder of Teresa Terrelson. A man down on his luck, I can abide. But a filthy red who chooses to live outside the rules of society, I cannot stomach. Maybe poor threes of Tarleton will provide the catalyst we need. I've spoken to the chief and the mayor, and I think it's time we send some men in to remove the godless and send them on their way over the county line. A grand day that will be, gentlemen. And a grand result you have brought me. You two are fast becoming my finest crusaders. Thank you.
we will look into it. Yes, I'm aware that it's an election year. Keep a hold of your hat, Counselor. Now is not the time to lose your nerve. It would appear that someone has hocked a rose gold wedding ring, a matching engagement ring. Sound familiar? Deirdre Muller. Press the pawnbroker and see what you can find out. The address is 348 South Main Street. The Muller case goes before the grand jury next week, and the DA does not want any egg on his face. Then get out to the railroad depot on Santa Fe Avenue. We have another poor unfortunate found this morning beside a railroad line. 40-year-old white woman. Right, Skipper. I don't know what makes you so stupid, but it really works. Another body and Deirdre Muller's ring. The Emperor may soon have to come to terms with the fact that he's wearing no clothes. What exactly did you get that book of riddles shoved up your ass, though? Is that what your old man paid college tuition for? You can drive. Fine. Where are we headed? You've got to admit, this is looking odd. Nah, anyone could pawn a ring. But if you take it along with all of the other indicators... Cole, Hugo Moeller was identified by the school's groundkeeper. He's our guy. Witnesses have fingered the wrong guy before. He ran, for God's sakes. And he always maintained he was set up. How can I help you boys? Detectives Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. You have a rose gold wedding and engagement ring? David Bremner. Am I gonna get something for this pledge? Gave that bum money, now you guys are gonna leave me short. How much did you give him? Fifty bucks. Try another number. Twenty? Try ten. Feel lucky you're getting it. I have the rings right here. Mark here. Maker's Mark. Usually traceable. That one came from Hartfield's Jewelry down on Broadway. Thanks for the tip. Does this mark mean anything? Hallmark. Gives you an idea of the quality. What have you got on the guy who brought these in? Goes by the name of Percy B. Shelley. Gave an address. 15 Poland Street, London, Tulare County. Can you give us a description of the man who pawned these rings? I'm not sure. Medium height, medium build, dark hair, I think. Sorry. He just had one of those forgettable faces. We'll be in touch, Mr. Bremner.
Can you drive to this one? And where exactly are we going? We have a problem. We could have the local troopers check out the Tulare County address. The address is bogus. The purpose having fun with us. The guy who's been sending the Dahlia letters is also the guy who pawned these rings. How do you figure that one? Percy Bysshe Shelley wrote the poem that came with the Dahlia letter. If the Dahlia letters are genuine, then the man who killed Elizabeth Short may have also killed Deirdre Muller. And how do we prove that, Phelps? Skipper ain't gonna like this one bit. We're gonna have to rely on this guy tripping up on his own vanity. You boys ready? Follow me. We should keep this development with the ring under our hat until we speak with the captain. We're all on the same team, Rusty. Chain of command, Phelps. The skipper will decide who needs to know. You got it? I get it, Rusty. I just don't like it. Hard, isn't it? Yeah. I look after all the rail depots. What have you got? The Negro, Nelson Gaines, called it in. I came down here to make sure him and the other guy, Jameson, stuck around. Jameson found the body? Something like that. Guy makes me sick. We'll talk to the coroner. Keep an eye on both of them. Smell? Very good. There is the usual evacuation smell, but it appears she's been living rough for quite some time. Very strong smell of alcohol. Well, the autopsy will tell, but I would assume that she was inebriated. Another missing ring. It certainly seems I've been swabbing a lot of bare fingers recently. Can you be more exact about the time of death? No later than 2 a.m. The state the body was in, a one or two hour window is the best I can do. go over to the lot and see what they know about her. That's going to be difficult, Cole. The Keystone Studio lot closed back in 41. Wouldn't park there if I were you. Maybe someone at Mensch's will remember her. This is a chit for personal items, not booze. It's an angle worth investigating.
What have we got here? White female, approximately 40 years of age, lipstick smudges on the face, but no writing, at least nothing legible. A blunt force trauma to the temple, nose, and eye regions. Ligature marks point to the probable cause of death being strangulation. Any idea of the time of death? From her temperature, after midnight would be my guess. Detective Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Can you tell me exactly what happened? We were shunting cars over to the main line when I saw this man here lying on top of this woman. The woman wasn't moving and seemed to be in a bad way. What time was this? About 7.30 this morning, sir. Thanks for your help. Have you given Patrolman Hart your detail? I have, sir. Thank you. You can go now. Detective Phelps, LAPD homicide. John Ferdinand Jameson. We need you to answer some questions, John. If you don't mind, I prefer Ferdinand. Don't push your luck, knucklehead. What were you doing to the body, Ferdinand? Are you sure you won't be upset? Try me, Ferdinand. I was kissing her. It's not against the law. Shut up. There's no Take law your against beating it. like a man. Turn out your pockets, Ferdinand. Classic Carmine. Is this yours, Ferdinand? No. I found it near her purse. I thought she could use some lipstick. Rusty, stop! Don't hit him. You uh, went through her purse? It wasn't like she needed it. I took a look. You found her lipstick. What did you write on her body? What are you talking about? I didn't write anything. You found the body? Yes, I did. I work here. I was coming off shift and headed home. You just came across the body? Yes, that's exactly what happened. You're under arrest, Jameson. We'll see how this plays out. Until then, you can think a little on how you'd like to be treated if you were found dead. I'm telling you, it's not illegal. Me and some friends of mine... T Clyde, can you get this sack of shit into a cell? I'll deal with him later. Sure, Rusty. Phelps badge 1247. How can I help, Detective? I need an address on Levine's Liquor, closest store to the Santa Fe Avenue rail yard, if possible. Just a moment, Detective. Closest store would be the one at 939 South Hope Street. Thanks, ma'am. Great. How are we going to look getting around in this thing? You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Great. How are we going to look getting around in this thing, Cole? It reads that those goddamn Chinese want to sell the relief food that we're sending them? Yeah. Yeah, I read about that. People are starving. They can't do that. They want to sell the food to fund the civil war against the communists. Really? I guess that's okay, then. Armies can't fight without food. You spend all your money on weapons, but you still have to have the will to fight. Fortunately, the Reds will win in China. Watch your mouth. You know what you're saying? The people of this country overthrew a king. You think the Chinese will balk at an emperor if they are starving?
Brink, fellas. Phelps, Galloway, homicide. We need to ask you some questions concerning Evelyn Summers. I'm Walter Mensch. Evelyn Summers? What is it now? You knew Evelyn? As well as I wanted to know Evelyn. She's a pain in the ass, always coming in here, cadging drinks, never had any money. She was in just a couple of nights ago. Did she ever tell you where she was staying? I don't know. I think she was living rough. She had that kind of stunk about her. Who did she drink with? Uh, a bunch of these guys. Ask around. What's your name? Grosvenor McCaffrey. Mind if I ask you some questions, Mr. McCaffrey? I'm just a starving writer, detective. What do you want to ask about? Evelyn Summers and why she was found beaten and strangled in the rail depot on Santa Fe. Okay. I see your point. How well did you know her? I can't say that I knew her. It was more like I was aware of her. Did you see Evelyn last night? No. I was at home, writing. Do you want to get dragged into this, McCaffrey? Do you want us to get interested in you? She hung out with this powder puff, James Tiernan. They haunted the public library together. How well do you know James Tiernan? I know he works some kind of plebeian job at Rawlings Bowling Alley. Rawlings? I know that place, corner of Ninth and Grand. A lot of cops bowl there on Tuesday nights. Do you have a criminal record, Mr. McCaffrey? Nothing serious. I've had a few skirmishes. Do you want to save me some time, or do you want me to look up your file? Industrial disputes, strikes, workers' rights, that kind of thing. A regular fifth columnist. Nice to meet you, comrade. Thank you for the information, Mr. McCaffrey. You a friend of Evelyn Summers? Who's asking? Very cute. You know who's asking. I know my rights. You don't have any. Answer the question. Evelyn mooches for drinks. I don't have any time for that. Was that so hard? Keep writing me, copper. You know the way. You can drive. Fine. Where are we headed? You've got to be kidding. We're driving this? Great. How are we going to look getting around in this thing, Cole? What did you make of McCaffrey? There'll come a day, and it's coming very soon. We'll run him and the rest of his pinko buddies out of Los Angeles. <laughs> I meant as a suspect, Rusty. What can I do for you? LAPD, Phelps and Galloway. We're making inquiries into the murder of Evelyn Summers. Evelyn? She's dead? You knew Evelyn Summers, Mr. Robbins? Yes, I knew Evelyn. I was a good friend of her ex-husband. She kept some of her stuff here. Can you show us, please? Sure. Come this way. Fine stock here, Mr. Robbins. You know, you let us take some from the road, this case might get solved a lot quicker. He's joking, Mr. Robbins. She kept a bed here, but I probably shouldn't have let her. An alcoholic in a liquor store, that was never going to work out, was it? We'll take a look around.
She wasn't always such a loner. Evelyn was reading Aristotle? Evelyn wasn't stupid. The only stupid thing about her was her need to drink. And she was borrowing books from Grosvenor McCaffrey. I'm guessing Evelyn hadn't held down a job for quite some time before she was killed. Rawlings Bowling Alley. Maybe Evelyn did something other than drink in her spare time. When exactly did Evelyn work in the pictures? A few years ago. She worked in legal copyrights for music. We're trying to account for Evelyn's movements yesterday. She came by in the morning. A social visit to pick up some of her things? She had a couple of bucks and bought a quart of rye. Any idea where the money came from? She didn't mention it. But she did say the booze was a present for a boy. She said they had been fighting and she had to make it up to him. Were you and Evelyn close, Mr. Robbins? How many people will be sad she's gone? I'll be one of the few. We got the impression that Evelyn had been sleeping rough of late. It became difficult for me to have her staying here. Her mother was trying to get her back on the straight and narrow. She's old now. And to be honest, you have to have a good reason to want to get back on. Do you know a friend of Evelyn's by the name of McCaffrey? Not personally. She talked about McCaffrey. Supposedly he fought in the International Brigade in Spain and in the miners' strikes back in Virginia. Thanks for your help, Mr. Robbins. No problem. Hey, I'd like to make arrangements for the funeral. Do you think I could get in touch with Evelyn's mother? Put in a call to the watch commander at Central Station, Mr. Robbins. He'll be trying to reach the next of kin. Thanks. Get the guy, huh? Evelyn never hurt anybody. You're behind the wheel. And where exactly are we going? You've got to be kidding. We're driving this? Car 11K, car 11K, come in. Car 11K, KGPL. Car 11K, 11 King. A message from Captain Donnelly, return to Central, go to. 11 King, enter out. Let's not keep the man waiting, Phelps. Captain is downstairs with Ray Pinker and Carruthers. Isn't that the cop who got the guy? What's this about, Captain? Ray and Mal have some concerns over the Henry and Muller cases, which I don't want aired outside of this room. The evidence is solid, Captain. I agree, Rusty. 
It's just that corpses keep piling up. Copycats. I've been banging the same drum. But the notes and the lipstick messages. Evelyn Summers, cartel classic Carmine. Each woman, same brand, same color. Teresa Terrelson didn't have a lipstick message. Technically, you're right, Rusty. She didn't have any lipstick. But she did have a message. We found it beneath her dress, scraped with a sharp stick. What did it say? You sure you want to know, Ray? As far as we can be sure, it said cunt BD. That's one way of looking at it. Looking at what? Cunt is all about access, Phelps. You're married, so yours is mortgaged. Some of us like to pay by installments. This guy doesn't like to pay at all. Why are you so angry, Mal? Because I just had to fire one of my assistants. He was a friend of Jameson's. God knows what he might have been up to. Captain, we have good leads in the Summers case. But it's up to you to decide how we proceed. Keep this under your hat for now. And to follow up on Evelyn Summers, I want daily reports. We got our orders. Back to the Summers case. Get an address for McCaffrey. He'll have blown the bar. I'll meet you outside. That bum took a swipe at me. He put it down in my sap. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge 1247. I need an address for a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Grosvenor McCaffrey. Apartment 6, 126 Yale Street, between Ord and Alpine. Thanks for your help. You can drive. Fine. Where are we headed? You've got to be kidding. You're driving this? Let me pose a question. Hands. What you got to do with? Morals. Would it bother you to put the wrong person away? Depends. On what? On whether anyone except the poor son of a bitch in the slam ever found out. McCaffrey is in apartment six. from the letter we found beside the body. At the very least, I'd say it ties McCaffrey to the scene. Junk. Junk. 
He said he was at home. He said he didn't know her. And we have the book. Let's see Carruthers argue his way out of this one. Is that you, Grosvenor? Who are you guys? What are you doing in here? We're from the LAPD, ma'am. Do you know where we might find McCaffrey? I'm his neighbor. Is he in trouble? Look, lady, we need to find him, and in a hurry. Are you going to give me trouble? He has a pigeon coop up on the roof. He spends his mornings up there when he's been drinking. How do we get up there? Down the hall and up the stairs. Drunk and in command of a carrier pigeon. Hmm. Surely we can ride him up for that. A citation, at least. That's a guy from the papers. Solve that big case. Grosvenor McCaffrey! Running on a hangover, McCaffrey? Sit Not down and we'll talk! I'll go get our wheels. You a runner, McCaffrey? Stay and fight the good fight! Give it up! LAPD! McCaffrey, you're under arrest on suspicion of murdering Evelyn Summers. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. And where exactly are we going? Great. How are we going to look getting around in this thing, Cole? Whatever it is, it's gonna have to wait, kid. Bronco, can you give me a hand? I got a hard time. I'm praying that those.